So a good leader to me is a good lover because they know that everything they do and everything their employees do is for one cause. It's love. And why is that? The book really is an inspiration that came from a client in a therapy session asking me, how many types of love are there? And I love it when a client calls me on my knowledge. And I immediately started counting one, two, three, and I said seven. And I talked to him about how I identified those seven loves. Um, but none of this had come from my psychological teachings. Uh, not in my master studies, not in my studies uh, as I was teaching university. It simply came to me in the moment. And I spent the next 10 years really or so thinking about this client's question. Because ultimately there's one love, but there's so many different expressions in our culture about what love means. And mostly those are romanticized stories and images which are lovely and beautiful, but psychologically they don't really give us enough of a breadth to grow through. So what we do is we source poetry and philosophy and religion and theater and films to tell us about love. And I really wanted a psychological model that was useful not only for therapists, but for everyone to say, these are the different stages through which we grow through. So for me, it began to turn this inspiration into a manifestation and the seven destinies of love were born. So there are many things that I hope readers take away from the book, mostly, it's that they walk away with an expanded definition of love. So I'm giving them different frameworks, different ideas for what love means and how to grow through it. But the idea is that they glean from these definitions, their own definition and their own philosophy from, for living from a loving space in their own lives. To me, this is incredibly important to not only our personal evolution and self-actualization, but to our societal evolution. If everyone could grow through their journey of love, the different stages and self-actualize through them, then I really believe that our society would improve. And this is not my idea. There are many other ways in which theorists have believed that our societies could evolve. Mine is simply a model of love. Well, in a couple of ways, I'm beginning to merge the worlds of psychology, business, and life into one. So my teachings reflect my own personal integration, which is what we're all aiming to do. We're all aiming to integrate all the different parts of ourselves. And that's what finding unity or oneness is. So. In essence, we're looking at where who we are is the same person in every room. So how do we apply that to the workplace? Well, I'm looking at what is the meaning of work without love? So a good leader to me is a good lover because they know that everything they do and everything their employees do is for one cause, it's love. And why is that? Well, because we talk about uh, loving what we do. So what I know in the corporate space is that where there is resistance, there is growth and there's tremendous resistance to the word love. The only way really that we use that word in the corporate context is loving our work, loving what we do. This is a safe use and a very limited use that doesn't integrate the parts of ourselves that are outside of the workspace. 
So everything we do is for the sake of love in our lives. We work for our well-being. We work for our dreams. We work for our life. We work for our goals. We work for our peace because these are the things that we love. When we bring that into our work context, we then begin to align ourselves with meaning and purpose. So I have three main points that I think are really important in the workspace. The first one comes from what I call soul love. This is manifested awareness. So it's like looking at a newborn puppy and feeling that love awareness arise in you. It's just, you can feel your whole body begin to smile. But what does this mean? This means that when you're a child, you might say, I want to be a race car driver. And then life begins to shape you. And as life shapes you, you say, yeah, when I was two or three, I wanted to be a race car driver, but is that really realistic? Uh, can I really get into that field? This isn't something I'm familiar with. All the limitations and experiences of life begin to play in on that story. And they drive us away from doing what we truly love. And for many of us, this is a misdirection, a lack of alignment with our heart's soul love. So corporations can use this because this awareness can be used into critical decision making. And this is critical decision making in our lives. So the way this works is, do I want to be a race car driver? Or do I want everything that I would have experienced when I dreamt about it at two? And what did I experience? I experienced the hands, the feeling of my hands on the wheel. I experienced the power when I put my foot to the metal. I experienced the freedom when that car took off. When you have remembrance of that place in your life early on or wherever it was that it showed up, you can then connect to, is it really a race car driver that I want to be? Or is it the power and the freedom that I felt from that dream that I want to pursue and manifest into the work I do today? And it's applicable in so many ways throughout our roles, our, our missions at work, and our corporations big missions that we're all a part of. I talk about ancestral love. We're hearing a lot about this, looking at our ancestry. And I talk about connected love. These are the imprints that we make through what we do and how we exist in, in this life. So by looking at our, our ancestral inheritance, we can also look at the ancestors that we are going to become. And we can bring that past and that future into the present. And that means the imprints that we inherited and the imprints we are going to make have an impact on the imprint we are making right here, right now. That could not be more relevant to what we bring to our work life. Add to that what I call connected love. And that is the love of all our relationships, whether they are professional, social, familial, uh, romantic. When we connect those together, we start to really come from a space of heart, a space where our highest self is not afraid. Our highest self is not filtered Instead, it is so deeply connected to our souls and our hearts that what we manifest in the workplace is the best of who we are. The last one is awakening love. And this means that life is not meant to be without feeling. It's meant to be a school of emotions. And when we can master our emotions, it awakens us into aligned, purposeful, and meaningful work. Our emotions, I think of as metaphors that guide us 
into the highest emotion that a human can feel. And that's love. So by fully evolving into love, how you serve in your life, it becomes a transmission of what you radiate and it shapes how everyone and everything around you responds.